Hello everyone and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math video series on how to use your TI-84 graphing calculator. So we're going to start by showing you how to enter your data into lists. So we go over to our calculator, we're going to hit stat. We're going to pick one, so we're going to go to edit, enter. Uh, looks like we have some old data in our list, so let's just, we'll show you how to clear that. You just need to arrow up to list one. We will hit clear, hit enter again, it'll clear the list. So now let's enter some data into list one. Just type, type the number you want, hit enter. We'll do like five points. Enter three, enter, let's enter four, five. And then, so these, we can make these our x values later on, but we're going to need some y values when we start plotting. So let's enter some data into list two. Uh, same way we did in list one, we just arrow over to the first cell, start typing in our numbers, hit enter after each one. It automatically brings us down to the next cell. All right, so now we have data entered in the list one, list two. The next thing we're going to want to do is after we have some data, let's, we're going to want to make maybe a scatter plot of it. So we hit our second key, go up to y equals. Notice that when you hit second, it should go to stat plot. So stat plot, we'll pick plot one, hit enter. We've got a few options here. First thing and most important thing is make sure you go, Click the little on there because it's currently set to off. So now we turned our plot on. Under type, there's a few different types of plots we can make. You've got, you can see your box and whiskers and histograms, but the first one that we'll select there because we want to scatter plot is the first one that's highlighted right now. Hit enter. Now it's asking us what list we want for our x values. Uh, it should default to list 1 for x and list 2 for y, which is exactly what we want. So then we can just go down. The mark is just the marks it'll put on the screen. Color is fine. So then what we do is we just hit graph. And there we have our data over here, our blue dots. But we have kind of a lot of open space here that we don't really need to have, I'd like to kind of zoom in on the data. So we can just go over to zoom, and there's a special zoom down here called, number on number nine, called zoom stat, and it will fit our screen perfectly to the data we have. So let's hit enter on, arrow down to zoom stat, hit enter. Now that's much better. Nice, clean, takes up the whole screen. And so we're looking at our data. It looks pretty linear. Usually when I see something this linear, I want to kind of fit a linear regression line to it. So let's show you how to do that. Let's, to do that, let's quit back to the home screen. You can hit second quit. You don't have to do that, but let's start from scratch. And so then to find our linear regression line, we will go to the stat button. But this time, instead of going into edit, we're going to arrow over to this calc menu. We've got a lot of options here, a lot of useful ones. We're going to arrow down to number four. Linear, linreg is short for linear regression. That's the one we want because our lot, it looks like our data will fit very well on a line. Though it's important to note that there are other types of regression if your data is less linear, if it's quadratic, cubic, you know, pick the, pick the option that will be best for your data that you're seeing. So let's hit enter on linear regression. Again, it's asking us What's the X list values? What's the Y list values? List one, list two should default. That's exactly what we have. Uh, you can skip over this frequency list option. It shouldn't usually be important. And now it's asking us, do we want to store this equation that it's going to calculate for us anywhere? Uh, yeah, we do want to store it because we want to plot it on our, we want it to graph, we want to graph the line it produces. So what we'll do is we'll enter into y1. You see these, this middle screen has an image of my uh, y equals screen. Let's enter into y1, and to do that, we have to go into vars, sort of variables, 
arrow over to y variables, hit into function, and then it produces all our uh, possible where to enter it, you know, y1, y2, we'll just enter it into y1, that's fine. So now it's going to store the equation, the linear equation into y1. Let's hit down to calculate. There it is. y equals ax plus b is the form. a will be 1.5. B will be 1.7. You could have manually entered that into Y1 yourself, but it prompts you to, if it wants to store it automatically, that's... Then we have our R squared and our R. You'll remember that those are a measure of how well the data fits to the line. Pretty good, 0.99. If you don't see those on your first go through, you gotta hit this second button, go down to zero, where it says catalog, second zero, and if we scroll down, we're going to scroll down to until uh, we get to the D. We're going to look for something called Diagnostic On, and that will turn on the calculation of those R squared. Then you'd have to go back and recalculate your linear regression if you want to see those R squared values, R and R squared values. Okay, keep scrolling. We're down to D. It's going to be here soon. All right, there it is. Oh, passed it. All right, so we go up to Diagnostic on. You just hit Enter. Enter again. Done. So then if you were to go back in and do your regression line, you'll see the R, R squared like we did. So now we can check that the equation was automatically entered into our Y equals by clicking Y equals. So now if we hit graph, it should graph that equation, and look, there it goes. Fits pretty well. Nice linear regression line. I can see, you can use that to predict other values, etc. So that's how you graph your regression equation onto your scatter plot. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to go through how to find some statistics like mean, median, uh, you know, standard deviation, variance, the calculator can all do that for you, for your data. So let's quit back to the home screen. Second quit. We go into stat again. Big surprising, this is our statistics menu. We're going to again go over to calc. And we can go to one var stats, one variable statistics. So this will give us statistics on just one column, one list of our data. We hit enter there. Now another menu prompts up. Which list do you want? List 1 is default. Let's get data on list 2 instead. So we to get list 2, we have to hit second. And down here you can see in blue above your 2 button, there's L2. Second, L, second 2 button gives us L2. Well, you can also see there's L3, L4, L5, L6 down here. Frequency list, we skip over. Let's just hit calculate and see what we get. All right, so a whole bunch of things pop up. X bar, which we know to be our average or our mean. Our X bar is, they're saying it's 6.2. Uh, sum of X, this means summation of X. That's just all of the data in that column added up. Summation X squared is just all that data squared and then added up. And then some important bits here, SX is our sample standard deviation, and si Sigma X, lowercase Sigma, the Greek Sigma, is our population standard deviation. Uh, N equals 5 tells us how many data points are in that list, which we entered 5, so that's good. We've got some more here. We got Min X tells us our minimum X value, which was 3 in our list 2, if we recall. Uh, Q1 is quartiles, or your first quartile. If we arrow down, as it's prompting us, it has a little arrow there, there's some more information. MED, median, our median value is 6. Our quartile 3 value is 8.5. And our maximum value in that list was 9. So this gives, so one var stats gives us, if we scroll back up, gives us a whole bunch of information, important information. Our average, our standard deviation for sample and population, number of data points, quartiles, etc. And then if we, if we clear all this stuff out, 
say, oh no, I forgot what the X bar was or the average was, or I want to use that in a calculation. If I go into variables again, this bars button, and instead of going to Y bars, I'm going to scroll down to statistics, hit enter, and it's going to prompt me with all a lot of the things I just had calculated. Let's scroll down to 2 X bar, which was 6.2, our average. If we were just to hit enter, there it is. It's stored. It's stored. It has stored X bar is 6.2. So if I did, you know, I could do. Say I wanted to find what's my average plus five, and I didn't want to add in my head. I go through again. Average plus five. Eleven point two. So those are some of the basic statistics features of your TI, of a TI-84. Again, these do apply to most graphing calculators. Thanks for watching. For more videos in this series, or for more general mathematics videos, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking here, or visit our website at centerofmath.org by clicking here. Thanks.